Just stop oil is just stopping sport. Okay, let's get on it. And uh, let's let's listen to Silverstone's managing director Stuart Pringle talking on Five Live yesterday. Motorsport and Formula One this sun uh, this weekend compared with, say, invading a flower show in Chelsea or uh, the out the outfield at Lords, um, there is a very high likelihood of serious injury or death if you go and sit in front of a racing car that can do up to 200 miles an hour. It is a ridiculously reckless thing to put your own life and uh, the drivers and spectators and marshals lives at risk. Uh, This is not a place for people to behave in such a fashion and I would urge people not to be so stupid. Um, Alex de Conning who is Just Stop Oil spokesperson. Hi, Alex. Hi, Nicky. Thanks for having me on the show again. If you remember, I'm the PhD climate scientist that called on Monday. We had a very good conversation about the climate crisis. Ah, of course, of course, of course. I I, I remember well. And you you made a a, a telling contribution, I seem to remember. A colourful at one point. Um, (laughs) um, My apologies again. what's, What's planned for Silverstone? Uh, well, I'm afraid I, I don't know, and even if I did, I don't think I would, I would tell you, Nikki. I'm afraid. Um, but I just want to start off by saying that all of our actions are really well risk assessed, which is a lot more that can be said for the um, government, which is licensing over a hundred new oil and gas companies' uh, licenses, knowing full well what that means for our crops, for our society, for our people. Mm-hmm. And that, what about people who say, "Look, that, that's already what I, I agree with this. I." I approve of the message. I'm on side. I've read the science. I know we're, we've got huge problems, but just let me enjoy the sport, you know, at least, you know, and you're you're doing your cause irreparable harm. I mean, we're not doing our cause irreparable harm, and I don't think it's fair to call it a cause. This is the survival of everyone, you know. Um, if people agree with the message but don't agree with the tactics, I mean, fabulous that you agree with the message. Please come and join a different group, which does it differently. For example, Extinction Rebellion or the Climate Majority Project, which are not taking as disruptive action. Um, There's no excuse not to get involved in this fight. It involves everybody and everybody is going to be affected. So if there were to be a protest at um, Silverstone, you'd be all for it? Um, Yes, there was a protest last year um, at Silverstone. Um, and it generated a lot of media output, which was fantastic. Just a month before that, um, we spent two weeks blocking all oil in the southeast of England, about 50% of all oil in the southeast of England. And that got nowhere near as much media coverage as when five people blocked Silverstone for, I think it was seven seconds. What do you say to that, uh, Graham Bench, Director of UK Motor Talk, uh, Motorist Help and Information website? What's your response? Good morning to you, Nikki. Well, I, I, I would, uh, I think, agree with the general aims of what's being proposed. Uh, I think as a, as a motorsport fan and as a motoring fan and so on, and a director of a, of, a, of a website that's dealing with motorists all the time, we all know we've got to go in a particular direction. We all know that, uh, that we have to reduce our reliance upon oil, but I am particularly concerned that perhaps the people with the the phrase risk assessment has already been used uh, by the other gentleman this morning. I'm not sure that possibly the people that are doing that risk assessment really fully understand the potential dangers of a protest at Silverstone. I have no problem with a protest at Silverstone. I don't think Stuart Pringle has, Um, as long as it doesn't involve crossing the track or in some way disrupting the the racing or the practice itself. I remember seeing many, many years ago, I think it was in the early 80s at Silverstone, somebody did get over a barrier and run across in front of the cars. They survived um, and they were very lucky because the marshal that chased them, uh, perhaps rather foolishly, also survived. I would not want to see that That was a rogue Catholic... A rogue Catholic priest many years ago, I think you're referring to. It was indeed. I don't remember the mm. details, Nicky, mm. uh, yeah. sadly. But um, uh, but it was a very rash act. And I am concerned that other people may be prepared to to, to 
uh, commit such rash acts again. And it's not just the person concerned that might choose to run across the track. I would hope that Silverstone security would prevent that happening. But nevertheless, it is not impossible. And that uh, if so, that they would perhaps fully understand that a 200 mile an hour motor car doesn't stop instantly because you've stood in front of it. It's going to take avoiding action. I think there was a previous incident in Italy a number of years ago, I think in the 70s, where a driver was killed, the protester was killed, two marshals were killed, and a couple of members of the public, the, the viewing audience, uh, were also killed. So, you know, that, that, that sort of action is so risky, I, I couldn't possibly countenance that, even though I do support their aims. And in conjunction with the rest of the industry, it is very clear we have to move away from oil. We've been supporting as uh, as a website and, of course, as an industry, we've been support, supporting EVs uh, over as part of a decade now. Uh, we've tried to show a way forward. Um, and that is okay. the way the industry is going by government. All right, yeah, catch. yeah. Let's talk about the protest. Martin from Merseyside. Hello, Martin. Hello, Nikki. Hi, we've got um, Alex there from uh, Just Stop Oil. What do you say to him about the protests and the methods for getting the message well, across? Well, I think to this protester, um, you have stopped things such as the, the, the ashes. Well, you've, I say you've stopped them. You've... Uh, You've disrupted them. Uh, you've disrupted the snooker. You've disrupted the the rugby union championship. You disrupted football. I would love for you to try this at the rugby league grand final in 99 days' time. You would not survive if you did it because the crowd would turn on you. Of course, you probably don't know that there's a rugby league uh, code going on because it's more focused on union. But... I would love for you to try and stop us. Go ahead and try it, pal. Oof. Thanks for the recommendation. I'll have a look into that. Uh, you can have a look at it, but you wouldn't get in, I can guarantee you. A stadium packed full of people from Northern England, you wouldn't survive. Nikki, Nikki, can I can I just say, can we please stop talking about hypotheticals about what we're going to disrupt, if we're going to disrupt anything? Can we please talk about what's really happening? The fact that New York, 10 million people couldn't leave their homes because they couldn't breathe because of wildfires in Canada. The fact that we're facing up to 40 degrees again this summer. 1,700 people died last summer when we reached 40 degrees Celsius. If we compare that to the deaths from the Iraq and Afghanistan war, which was 636, it doesn't compare at all. We need to prepare for the worst. We need to actually take action on the climate crisis so we don't get 40 degree summers every single year and we can't grow food. I suppose by definition, these protests are successful because the media are talking to you about the Martin. Do you not think that people are like rugby league are concerned about the future of their children, the future of the, uh, the planet? Um, I just wonder. We've got Ewan in Stoke-on-Trent as well. Hello, Ewan. Are you there, Ewan? Yes, I am, Nicky. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'll be with you in a second. Martin, should we not all care about this? Do you not do you not say, well, you know, it's 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 disruptive, some people argue, but that's the whole point. We need to get this message across. We are in a desperate situation, Martin. Oh yeah, I get what you're saying. Um we do actually care for the people of our generation, like the next generation or whatever. I certainly do, because I've got a little boy. And I want him to grow up to be happy. And I'll tell you something else. We don't really... I say that we don't care about it. We do. But we, we, we care about it in our own way. You know, so there's a wildfire that's going on in Canada, OK? That's nothing really to do with just stop oil, is it? That's not, you know, the, the oil company's fault that that's going on. Um, you say that, we, oh, we can't grow enough food. Just there, please. Please. Can I interrupt there? It is um, directly related. The more oil and gas is burnt, the more carbon dioxide is released. So the warmer the entire earth gets, that means the land becomes drier and the more likelihood of wildfires. Um, the wildfires in Canada, the, if there wasn't a climate crisis, the area that was burnt would have been, I think, 12 times smaller than it actually was. And it would have been, I think, 200 times less likely to happen. 
So yes, this is a direct result of the climate crisis. Can I and ask this fellow, have you learned to drive? Can I ask this fellow, did you learn to drive? Uh, no, I You're haven't. Not I don't see how that's relevant. Well, uh, it's a case of, oh, just stop oil. They need to stop using every form of oil going. Um, you really We're have no idea about crop as to failure. the world, We're do not you? talking about that. It, It's just stop oil, mate. Yeah, I'm sure you're saying that it's just an issue to do with gas just stop oil. Hang on a second, everyone. Years. I want to I want to explore. Obviously, this is at the heart of it. This issue, but I, what I, I what I want to do is I want to explore the support for these protests, which are, as I said, by definition successful uh, to an extent in their aim to get more publicity for it but is it is it counterproductive will it will it turn people off uh, the actual message because their their fury and their anger and the feelings that their lives are being disrupted uh, will 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 trump things and also of course some people might argue that it's uh, it's a lot better that these kind of things are happening than you know ambulances are being blocked on the M25 or whatever so we'll, we want your views on this 0885 909 no you make you make the point about the ambulance but um some people say yes some people say no it's a moot point uh, jeff and uh, uh, abba but the ambulances say no okay yeah, uh, good you, morning nikki hello jeff um, what do you think well <laughs> Uh, I, I'm a bit amazed. In my, my view, and I know it's shared by a, a, a many of my friends, is that uh, these actions are taken by a, a, a very elite group of people. Um, are they living in the real world? You know, we are a small country, fine, and we set an example to the rest of the world. However, <laughs> There's a lot more pollution going on in China and other big countries, India, and uh, what these people are doing, we don't all live in big cities. People need vehicles to get from A to B, to get to work and to do their shopping, etc. And we all work or have worked and we like to go to leisure facilities, i.e. the tennis, snooker, football, rugby, and all these people are doing is sort of disrupting it. There has to be a different way of doing this. And, uh, you know, I like hear now on your program that they are thinking of going to a Grand Prix. Well, <laughs> Flipping heck, as someone has already said, these cars are going at 200 miles an hour and they don't stop uh, instantly if someone steps in front of them. I suppose That's people will say, look, China, China, is, make, China, is, um, China is building more wind farms than any other. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, wait, I just got to put other stuff in. China is, is way ahead when it comes to building wind farms and we should surely be leading by example because we are being Well, told. I don't mind building wind farms. I haven't got a problem with that. We are global what leaders. What I have a problem with is, is people disrupting and, and uh, stopping emergency vehicles. My wife has recently come out of hospital and I know a rate... I would have been, if I'd have been on the M25, stuck in an ambulance waiting to get to a hospital. Or waiting Nick, for a Nick, police vehicle to attend to yeah. an emergency yeah, yeah, yeah. in, in my I get it, area. I get it. Wait a minute, everyone. Who wants to, somebody said I want to say something. Who was this that? This is Ewan from Stoke on Trent. Come in, Ewan. Come on in, Ewan. Yes. Okay. I mean, this hasn't been tried. I mean... Also, I mean, negotiations between them and the oil, oil protesters, the authorities, it's never been tried, but a slight negotiation between the two, why couldn't they be letting ambulances through if it was that much of a, a, an emergency? Surely a bit of common uh, sense. Nicky, can I please... We could... We'll now, let him finish first. Say, this chap's going to carry on now regarding not letting ambulances through. That's a possibility if they negotiated. Right, can I go Wait a minute, everybody. Alex. Um, we don't block ambulances. We did a freedom of information request on the London um, Emergency Services, and no emergency services has been blocked for any meaningful amount of time. Well, We've never received a complaint from emergency services. That is what right-wing media is projecting, and somehow other stations have picked it up. I don't doubt that. 
Yeah, but all, there has been it has been very disruptive for people's lives as they're going to as they're going about trying to do their business. And all I was saying is yes, maybe I don't people. Do, I don't do that, Nicky, but it's all I was saying is go. that maybe people should be more relaxed about this because it is only a sporting event. That's one argument that we're hearing. It's not disrupting people's mm-hmm. lives. It's just a, a few moments disruption in a sporting event. That's the that's the argument I'm hearing from some people. What are we going to hear from Sarah in Liverpool? What are we going to hear from Joyce at Glasgow? I cannot wait. Joyce, good morning. Hello, Nicky. I'm a big Hi. admirer. That's nice of you. Thanks. So, what about? Are you a big admirer of Just Stop Oil's tactics no, at the moment when it comes you. to sport? What? I'm a big admirer of Nicky Campbell. I despise Just Stop Oil. <laughs> yeah, you won't be saying that when your grandkids are dying, will you? Well, this is not an argument, Nicky. Let Joyce um, have a say. Let Joyce have a say first. As someone who studied geology, and I'm continuing to do so. Um, the fact of the matter is the whole earth has been covered in ice at one point, no, or may- no, maybe more than one. No, no. The whole earth has been very hot, which is how we got no. fossil fuels in the no. first place. No. This is nature. And no. the fact of the matter is those of us who are no. not very well off, and I'm on a very low income, when I save up for three months to go to a sporting event, like I did last year when I went to the Davis Cup, I got to meet everybody except Jamie Murray. And that won't happen because these Just Stop Oil people are going to put up all the prices because of the extra security. We're not going to get to meet our heroes because of the extra security because we all know security men are the most lovable people in the world, don't we? So they're not attacking the people who make the oil. They're cowardly. I believe they're right-wing activists in their own way. And it's just awful what they're doing it really is it makes my blood boil I'm watching well, Wimbledon trying to talking of boiling the world is burning talking of boiling the world is burning that's what they say well Maybe. that's what the scientists say that's the wait, wait a minute I just, it's, let's cut this one off at the pass it's, it's Friday um uh, you know, there is massive, massive... Read the IPCC report. There is overwhelming political consensus that this is anthropogenic and this is happening. So the argument you yes. should be making, Joyce, if I were to be your media advisor, would be the following. Yes, it is happening. Yes, it is terrifying. But you know what? Don't do it at sporting events because it's a little bit of escapism for us in this miserable context. We're worried about the cost of living. We're worried about it. You turn on the news, you get misery, misery, misery. You turn on the radio, you get depression, depression, depression. Let us go to Wimbledon, have a couple of hours escapism and enjoy it. And we do engage. And and we will engage. That should be your message, Joyce, as your personal media advisor. When you come on and you say, it's not happening, this is not the case, it's always happened, there's always been ice, that's why we got the fossils. You've lost the argument, Joyce. I love you, Joyce, but you lost the (laughs) argument. Nicky, you've got got to follow the science, Nicky. The thing is, they're they're not attacking. They're only attacking us little people. That's what's annoying me. What about the little people when the world is when the world is burning? Sarah in Liverpool. So wait a minute, everybody. Sarah in Liverpool. Save me from myself, Sarah. On you go. Good morning, Nikki. Morning. Contrary to what some people think, we are in a climate crisis, and I can say that without fear or favour because living where I live, I know that the average temperature when it is hot in 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 Fair Merseyside should be about twenty degrees not 25 and 30, where you're seeing the birds flying with ice packs under one wing and then inhaling under the other because they can't breathe. Let's get that one straight. And the locals aren't that far behind. We can't... Anything over 20, we don't function. And to be perfectly honest, that goes to to Britain, full stop. Britain and Ireland, we don't cope well with heat. And people don't realise that. But that's the entree. Here's the main course. I get what Just Stop Oil's doing, and I know that the climate that the climate change is an emergency. It should have been sorted out a good ten years ago, not now. And I know that, but the tactics they're using are coming straight out of the, the suffragettes um, playbook. I get that, but if you want to get people on side, you've got to exp- you've got to engage with them. I know that. Kicking off and going, oh, we'll, we'll disrupt the, the ashes, we'll disrupt this, we'll disrupt that, you know, the various sporting events. 
I get what you're getting at. I understand why you're doing it, because this is a crisis, and we've got to make people What should think. they be doing? How should they be well, protesting? What you should be, in order to protest, now, first and foremost, now, protesting, we've all, we, we've all done that since the days of what, Tyler? Understandable. <laughs> we get that. We've got a long history of protest in this country. But if you want to engage the with the local, and the levellers, mm-hmm. and the chartists, and everybody else, on all it goes. the gang. So... In order but to listen, to listen, wait a minute, wait a minute, Sarah, wait a minute, Sarah. Politicians are, people are saying, reneging on their promises. Oh, they are. They are, they are watering down mm. our promises. They oh, are yes. They are decelerating our progress towards net zero. Oh, they are. They, they are tarnishing our reputation as mm-hmm. global leaders to the rest of the world and they as exem- exemplars. And That's so how do, how do you protest again? What do you say? What well, do you do? First and foremost, you get pro- if you're going to protest anywhere to get hold of the politicians, you protest, out, you do a two-pronged thing. First off, you go to Parliament and you protest to them. Then, as we've always done in the past, you have to you, you get hold of your... Lo- you get all your... Fa- your concert, you get all your people who are on your side to get, to get hold of their MP and buttonhole them. That's what they're there for. The more pressure you put on, everyone does to their local MP. Hey, what about this? What about this climate crisis? What is your? Oh, that's the famous thing about. Oh, you should see my mailbox. I've got lots of people saying this about the local park. You've got to put the pressure on. Wait wait a minute. Who's got some? Wait a minute, Sarah. Wait a minute, Sarah. Ewan. Ewan has got something to say on this. Um, I bet he has. They should embrace the young. They should, That's it. They should embrace the young, get the young on side. It's their future, get the young on side. That's, That's what it. they need. They embrace get... the young and get them involved. It's That's their future. It. It's not ours, it's yeah. theirs. That's what I'm saying. Alex is going to come in. Alex is going to come in. Ruben in a second, who is young. And uh, Can let's I embrace... Let's embrace. I'm not sure if you can, Joyce, but let's let's embrace <laughs> Alex. Go on, Alex. Uh, thank you very much, Nikki, and thank you very much for your call, Sarah. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, Extinction Rebellion just a couple of months ago did exactly that. They went to the Houses of Parliament. There was about ninety thousand people, many of them young, including me, but it didn't get any media attention really. It was. It didn't change anything. Ninety thousand people, the biggest mass mobilisation event in climate activism history in this country. And I didn't get any media attention. So that's why it's important to do a variety of tactics. There are people who are doing stuff like that and the Climate Majority Project. But we also need to raise the fire alarm. And when the fire alarm does get raised, we shouldn't sit in the building discussing tactics. We should go outside the building, stop pouring oil on the flames, and start finding a fire extinguisher. Don't you agree? And you've got to do. You've you got there, to. Alex. Wait a minute, Sarah. Sorry, I said I agree. That's okay. No, 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 no. I know you agree. I know you agree. But I'm, you know, I just want to say something to to Alex. Right? Okay. Um, Alex, yeah, raise the fire alarm. Yes, but stick within you know the parameters of science. Because you're getting a lot of flack in the media at the moment for appearing on another outlet, aren't you? It's in all the papers today. And I know you would say, oh, it's the right-wing papers. And that's fine, I'll let you say that in a second. But you said that when temperatures get hot enough, when it gets so hot that the sweat does not cool you down, you literally boil in your own sweat. So you said to colleagues of ours, I think it was Julie Hartley Brewer, you said, we're going. basically, this is the inference, we're going to boil in our own sweat. So um, I said that on GB News and I explained myself really. This is wet bulb temperatures. So in countries where it is so humid that your sweat does not cool you down, your organs stop functioning within a matter of six hours. And that is a scientific fact, yes. And, and that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen to all of us, is it? In the UK, um, no, human temperatures are not that much of a threat. In India, um, in a lot of other countries, in Southeast Asia in particular, um, and in Africa, that is a terrifying thing that's going to happen, yes, Thank unless you. we start taking climate action. Now. Thank you very much for putting that in context. It's all over the papers today. Now we can have, let me see now, Ruben in Reading. Hello, Ruben. Uh, you're right, bud. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. And Steve in Oma as well. Steve-o. Hello, Nicky. Hello. Hello, Steve-o. That's what it says here, Steve-o. I like it. Uh, Ruben, yeah. what, do you, what do you want to say, Ruben? Just stopping uh, sport? Is that acceptable? Well, 
No, not not a, no. I mean, it's, it's stopping sport, getting people on that are throwing paint over paintings is just a bit ridiculous. But it, it's one of those things. This whataboutism that we have in this country. Whenever people turn around and they say, "Oh, well, look at China, look at India." I've I've been to both countries, and those are places that are simply making textiles to export to the Western world. So we're creating that problem. You know, naturally, whenever we were still developing things in the UK. And exporting it out, we were creating that pollution. We've moved the problem to other places that are developing countries, and now turning around and saying, "Oh my God, you know, look at them! It's our consumerism which is causing this pollution." Those aren't the people that are necessarily taking in those products. So I think it's just very, very disingenuous whenever we turn around and say, "Hey, look at what China's doing! Look at what India's doing! They're doing it for a reason, and that reason is our demand." A bit of greenwashing going on then. That's exactly it. I think that I think that's exactly it. So do not get me wrong. I I don't agree with you know going out stopping traffic. I think the uh, you know average British person just trying to get to work gets very upset by that, and I don't blame them in the slightest. But being able to kind of turn around and say you know what this is an R issue. It's you know happening at the other end of the world, and that's why this is happening is extremely disingenuous. Can you understand why guys like Alex and others, you know, people who are concerned about the planet? Uh, all the species on the planet, the future of our children and grandchildren. Can you understand? Do you have a, a scintilla of sympathy for getting on there and putting some orange powder on the crease? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think a little part of me really does. If you believe that strongly in something, and I think you know a lot of the data and the science behind it is naturally valid. I mean, by no means I'm not a scientist. There's a reason why I'm probably calling you at ten thirty on a uh, Friday. Uh, but it is one of those things where it, you know. If you do believe that strongly in something and you think, you know, time's ticking, you, you're going to go to extreme lengths. I think someone earlier messaged, you know, stealing tactics essentially from the suffragettes. And that's what they're doing. They, you know, they got their point across. They were able to actually make some, you know, monumental change. And I think that these people are trying to do the same thing, whether that kind of goes towards a modern British public that, you know, really just wants to get on. They want to watch the football, tennis. They don't want to see it be interrupted by people going on. And I, I think it might be something that's, you know, shining that kind of light directly in the public's face. And it's not something that they like to see necessarily. They don't want to think about doom and gloom whenever, you know, they're, they're watching someone win or lose. Yeah, and they get angry with Just Stop Oil. Anna in Newcastle. Hello, yeah. Anna. Hello. Good morning, Nikki. Um, Hi. Yeah. Are you angry uh, with you so Just Stop Oil? Them. Are you angry with No. Them? No, I completely support them. And honestly, I feel a bit sorry for them. Because I just, I don't get it. You know, just off what, as Alex explained earlier on the show, uh, they've tried everything, it seems. You know, they've, they've targeted the oil industry. They've, they've gone to um, oil terminals across the country. They've protested outside of Parliament. They've uh, joined in community building events like the uh, one that Extinction Rebellion did. And they, people are still getting angry at them no matter what they do. And... I just don't understand the logic uh, of Nikki, getting angry at just a oil and then not doing anything themselves. It's stay, stay it's there, Rana. I'll let you hypocritical. come back in a minute. Yeah, you can come Steve back and you can, you can have a conversation with Steve-O. I'd like you to have a conversation with Steve-O. Um, Steve-O. Hi, hi, Nikki. Um, I would have been sympathetic towards um, the cause, but after they attacked Pride, and I do say it was an attack because... Pride, I was involved in Pride uh, when it first started uh, uh, years ago in the 80s, and we were fighting a lot of stuff ourselves. Uh, we uh, are very sympathetic towards causes like that. They would have been able to have uh, uh, somewhere in the Pride or at the parade to have a say, but they didn't. They interrupted it, and uh, to say that they're not... Uh, causing harm is uh, it's not true. They are causing harm. They did not need to do that. They would have got a platform at Pride to do something. So I, I don't understand why they needed to do that. Where was pro- which well, Pride? Which hang, hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll know in a second. Which Pride London, event are you? Did, uh, we're talking about London Pride. Um, I, was I, was, I, was ta- oh, I thought you might be talking about pride in your neck of the woods and Omar or wherever, because that's no, a big thing. No, that's no. a big thing there, isn't it? I mean, you know, that's quite... Anna, come back on what Steve-O said. Counterproductive. Um, well, yeah, just talking about pride specifically, I'm gay, and I was so happy to see Just Up Oil disrupting pride 
because it wasn't an attack. And what sort of an image do you think it would have been if Just Stop Oil had been marching along in the parade happily behind Coca-Cola, you know, the biggest polluter in the world? That's no kind of platform. I think the only way that they're going to be able to raise awareness and get attention to the fact that we're all going to die from the climate crisis in a few decades is by disrupting people because no one's paying attention to them otherwise. I, I well, honestly, I have so much respect for them. I think it takes absolute bravery. The pride is about Sorry. respecting each other. Uh, respecting each pride other. Pride is a protest, Steve. Pride began with the Stonewall riots. Would you have been angry at the Stonewall rioters for breaking the law and throwing bricks at the police? But it's also about equality. That was it's also about understanding each other. And it's also uh, about letting people say what they have to say. Yeah, so why why aren't you understanding Just Stop Oil? Why aren't you letting Just Stop Oil say what they have to say? Well, that's what I'm trying to say. They could have said that on the parade. They could have got their platform. You know as well but as I do, Steve, do they, stop, they would have had nearly stop, enough attention. Do you want to stop someone else having a platform so that they can have a platform? Well, you know what, Steve? I would much rather be made 20 minutes, half an hour late for work. I would much rather have a sports event that I want to go and see um, disrupted. I would much rather have Pride paused for 15 minutes if it meant that we could stop this climate crisis, that means that my little sisters are not going so, to have a happy future. So we do what you want? Well, no. We well, raise the alarm, as then? Alex has put it so saying? clearly. So we just do what and you then, want? OK, what what Just Stop All wants is a better future. What Just Stop All wants is clean air. They want affordable energy bills. They want people to be able to live happily. what do you think Pride wants? Uh, Pride wants queer people to have happy and safe futures as well. The demands are the same. Yeah, so so why stop Pride? Okay. Because Pride weren't doing enough. (laughs) Thank you very much indeed. I suppose they would say, look, we have to move the political dial here because they're arguing that politicians are reneging on their promises. Keir Starmer got a lot of uh, flack yesterday, didn't he, from protesters. Rishi Sunak has been accused by Lord Goldsmith. Whatever you think about Lord, Lord Goldsmith, a committed environmentalist, he said of Rishi Sunak that he doesn't even care. So if you're a climate protester, what do you do? Or maybe it is just dangerously counterproductive and it's turning people off and making people look in another direction and bury their heads further in the sand. Talking of sport, sporting icon, BBC icon uh, Gary Lineker uh, has said, I think he said this yesterday, just stop oil's cause is probably more important than disrupting sports events. Um, He voiced his sympathy with campaigners. I read in the paper of record, is the Telegraph, while hosting an environment panel at Wimbledon, day after protesters um, halted play, of course, by running onto the court and throwing, oh, it's a jigsaw puzzle onto the grass. Um, I completely understand where they're coming from. Disruptive protest is the only one that gets any publicity. Well, here we are. Um, And there's been a lot of it recently in the sporting arenas. Do you have sympathy, I wonder? Um, Let's let's hear from you. And I'm going to ask Katie Wyatt that question from The Athletic. I I love The Athletic. Um, A writer, a journalist, an observer, um, a sports nut. Uh, Katie, do you have sympathy? Morning. Uh, morning. Sorry about that. Um, I do. Yes, I think it's a, a really, really critical issue. And I think it's one that in the coverage, we often read about how they're disrupting sport and they're causing trouble and they're uh, manic and they're, they're doing too much. And we very rarely read kind of nuanced analysis of the climate crisis and the real point that they're trying to make. So I have sympathy for their cause. And I agree that we shouldn't be investing in new um, fossil fuels, given the state that the climate is in and the drastically shrinking window that we've got to do something about it. So, so yes, I do agree with um, what they're protesting for. Yeah. Harry and Bryce Norton, do you agree? Uh, I agree with the principles of what uh, they're standing for, but not their tactics. Disruptive, mm-hmm. ruining of the fun that we should have in life. We've all gone through a hard enough period of time with our covid and they were all under pressure with the economy. We don't need that. 
this is actually vandalism. And these people should be put in prison and kept in there for a long time because what they're doing is disgusting. It's ruining our history, our art, our sport, our pleasure, and the quality of life that we do have left after all this uh, you know, COVID rubbish. Um, we need that freedom to enjoy ourselves as best we can, let alone have uh, people extremists like this. That's all it is. It's ruining everything. If they think about what they're standing for, no oil or gas. So elderly people, young anyone will die through the winters if we don't have sufficient heating. And the wind technology, brilliant as it is, that is also has its limitations. No one's there is that. that. There is there is that. But t- just taking it away from that particular aspect of the debate, we were discussing it the other day. Do you not think? Yeah. Is there a part of you that thinks, Harry? And thanks ever so much for for getting in touch. Okay. Hugely appreciated. Um, do you not think, Harry, that there's a part of you fear or suspect that when the history books books are written, if there is anyone to write them, we will say, "My goodness me, they were right. They were so right." Well, the thing is, you see, all I was going to go on to about the wind is a simple thing, all right? If you read on the history books here and the learning curve of wheat, maize, barley growing, it needs wind to dry it. Now, if we use the uh, the principle of those generating electricity is great, but how about when you take away the wind power that's meant to cover our whole country and all our agriculture? You take away then the drying ability of our crops and therefore you'll get mould on our crops, which will be, you know, and, uh, it, you won't believe the food, it'd be poisonous. Okay, what an existential so threat is... to the planet, though. Oh, Laura in Bristol. Oh. Where? Oh, Harry, stay there. Laura in Bristol. You here, Harry? Yeah. Hello, yeah. Hello, you heard Harry? I did, yeah. In fact, actually, I'd like to, to speak directly to Harry and to listeners Great. that might, Great. might have the same Great. opinion as him. I mean, Great. just a boil is a terrible name. It should have always been called No New Oil. And, and the demands are very simple. No new oil and gas licensing. People talk about China. Um, currently, the UK is 1%. As, as Ruben um, said earlier, we don't include infrastructure, transportation, all of our goods, and aviation and our military. The UK government is planning to put 15% of all the world's um, investment into new oil and gas. So saying we're world leaders when we're planning to do that is a lie. Um, and when Harry talks about energy security and, and people dying in their homes because of because of the cold, well, currently UK taxpayers um, pay 91% of all infrastructure in North Sea oil and gas. And um, that money, included with the tax they don't pay, is £236 million every single week in the UK. That money could be going to affordable energy, could be going to renewables. It could insulate people's homes so that we don't have people dying every year. We have an average of 8,500 old people die in their homes because of the cold every year. And we have oil and gas. Have you been on a protest? I have, yes. Um, I'll tell you why I've been on a protest. I'm a mother. Um, I've got an incredible seven-year-old son, Alex. Um, He's really creative. He loves drawing. Um, He loves gaming. And he's always telling me what he wants to be when he grows up. Um, All excited, changes his mind every week. And and how can I look him in the eyes? Uh, And I have to smile with gritted teeth at him because... I've looked at the science. The United Nations are saying code red for humanity. Already the climate crisis, 40 degree heat last year in the UK. Um, 1,700 people died because of that. And, and on GB News, we've got um, journalists, in inverted commas, hysterically laughing at 1,700 people dying in the UK. That is a fact. We are in a climate crisis. We, we are. are so, so close to, to not being able to feed our children. We've already got food shortages. Crops are failing. And if we continue suicidally licensing new oil and gas, even though the industry knows it's killing people, that ExxonMobil had scientists in the 70s that they employed that projected what we're seeing right now on the planet. They have known, they've hidden the science and still 
we the media is complicit with the lies. Well, not not this media. Well, I, I keep. Uh, I keep. I keep. I, whenever I'm on. When I'm well, the, okay, but but whenever I'm all, no, I'm always making. I've read the science. I'm always making up. I'm the UN. You rightly point out today, saying that you know the climate change is out of control. I'm not happy about it. I've got to say, and it's not something we need to. It's like you know because there is such scientific consensus. It's not something we we need to here at the BBC be uh, impartial about um, because it's not one of those issues. Uh, Colin in Belfast, I'd like you to talk to. Laura in Bristol. Laura is talking about her beautiful boy, her beautiful seven-year-old son and his future. Colin, good morning. What do you say to her? Hello, Laura, and, and good morning, Hi. Nicky. Hi. Um, I, I fully appreciate the cause. I really do. And as lots of people have alluded to today, um, there's different ways to, to get your, your point across. I think what we need to do is we need to stop given her time to just stop oil. If they do feel the need to interrupt the sporting event, let's call it what it is and let's say um, that the cricket match was interrupted by a, a group of criminals, but let's not publicise their cause. No one remembers the name of the, the horrible man that, that done the shooting in New Zealand in the mosque because Jacinda Ardern refused to speak his name. And if we simply refuse to give such protests... That's quite a parallel to draw. Anything, oh, yes, I, I, I understand that. But if we, if we stop giving our time or stop publicising what the cause is, there are ways to do it. They do need to lobby a parliament. But interrupting sporting events, it's just turning more and more people. I would be very sympathetic to, to the cause, but I'm becoming less and less sympathetic the more disruption that it actually causes. But I think once we stop publicising it, then we'll be in a better place. Can I come in there? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, just to remind everyone that it's not a cause. This is We're not talking about a cause. We're talking about the, the future of all humanity on the planet. And there will be no sporting events on a dead planet. There will be no art on a dead planet. But m most importantly, there's no future for my child on a dead planet. Um, and, Nikki, I do appreciate you. You've been really great today. I'm definitely going to start listening to your show. Um, about BBC impartiality. BBC impartiality actually only came in after the Extinction Rebellion um, protest of 2019, where they got the government to to declare that we were in a climate. No, it came. It came uh, when it. it no, no. It's 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 been something that um, has uh, has happened over time because of the. Uh, because of the scientific consensus, like evolution, nobody seriously you know, discusses yeah. that, except well, Northern well, Ireland. Nikki, but, we, yeah. we know that the, the scientific um, predictions were there in the 70s. And you said um, that, yeah. what's, happened, what's happened is very like the, the smoking industry. Um, you'd have a scientist to talk about the climate crisis. And then alongside, you'd have someone that was actually lobby a lobbyist for the oil industry well, as a counter argument, and that, we don't was, do that, that. was classed as you don't do it anymore. Yeah, but that that decision to not have oil lobbyists to be the counter argument to a scientist, that decision, unfortunately and quite crazily, only came in after Extinction Rebellion protests. Yeah, well, other out, uh, other outlets um, apart from us do do, do 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 that. <laughs> yeah, yes, they still yeah. Happen. Yeah, and listen, you, you mentioned um, Julie Har Hartley Brewer earlier. That's why uh, I, I mean, I don't think anyone should, in a rational um, debate, can ever use Julie Hartley Brewer. Well, okay, whatever you say about Julia, she's a, she's a, she has her views and she puts them out. And she's a fine broadcaster. I will say that. Like Colin in she's Belfast, you call you, you, you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You, it's, it's not about her. Colin, you called these people criminals. Yeah, they're, they're committing criminal activity. Um, if you, you invade a football pitch, it's a, it's a criminal offence and people can Who be are the criminals? as a result. Who the, really the people, are the criminals the that, here? The people that, that partake in, in these um, protests. I'm all for having an organised protest. Contact the police, arrange a demonstration. Should that be outside the Houses of Parliament? Let, let's do that. Let's have an organised protest and try and gain some publicity for it. But a soft touch, hopping over a, a fence or climbing over a, a wooden frame at a snooker match to, to get your point across and interrupt what many people have worked really, really hard to, to go and enjoy. It's absolutely ridiculous. 
why don't we go to Saudi Arabia and make our case there where, where we've got real concerns around oil? Um, oh, yes, I know why we won't do that because of the, the regime. We're just too soft to think all in all. But we need to stop the publicity for it. Let it be a protest about something. Should it be just stop oil? Should it be animal rights? Let's just call it criminals interrupting a sporting event. And all of a sudden, once the publicity isn't there, I think we'll have um, a, lo- a lot more or less disruption. Can I come in Katie, then? Katie, come back. Yeah. You're still there. Yeah. Mm. Are you asking you me say? to respond to that? Yeah, just I am. The, the, in a kind um, of pass- I, think- I was a, a, a passive way. I'm soaking it all up. Yeah, carry um, on, Katie. I think there's a few things. I mean, the, the first caller, Harry, when he was talking about what are all people going to do in their homes in winter, and that's the kind of misinformation or misunderstanding, isn't it, that I think fuels a lot of this. It was, as Laura was saying, it's no new oil and gas, no new fossil fuel licenses. It's about finding newer, safer, healthier ways that are better for the planet, that are more sustainable to to support that our energy infrastructure in that way. Um, and I think that's kind of at the heart of a lot of the issues around Just Stop Oil. And what has been really disheartening for me as a sports journalist is that a lot of the coverage around it is these people have ruined Wimbledon, these people have ruined cricket. It's very rare that you see a direct response to Just Stop Oil that is contextualising what they're actually doing in terms of sport greenwashing in sport and what is sport doing about the climate crisis and we know that there are so many ways that sport is tied up with the climate crisis whether that's when you have gulf states and oil states involved in football clubs or involved in sport or whether that's just the logistics of flying as we're going to have for the women's world cup in football this summer hundreds of players over to australia on the other side of the world all of the just fans even having plastic bottles at games or whatever it is we know that there are huge issues with professional sport and and um the climate crisis so it's really disappointing that we rarely see a kind of nuanced response to this it's all the hysteria of these people are criminals and ruining our sporting events rather than really trying to get to the crux of the issue which is how little time we've got to save the planet it's good to hear from people though it's good to address other people's views michael near preston uh lorry driver at services near preston good on you michael for coming on Hello, Michael. What would you like to say to Just Stop Oil? Yeah, I've been listening to, obviously, what people have been saying this morning about the stopping the oil and the protest. And I think it's an absolute disgrace what the uh, Just Stop the Oil are doing to the country. Uh, not just me, as a, obviously, as a lorry driver, but it's uh, they're just totally ruining the, the country and it's making us a laughing uh, stock of Europe if uh, we're not already. As the obviously, I won't say the name of the company that I work for, but we've been target, uh, targeted personally, and it's and it's horrendous. Let's get the wagons off the road. Let's do this. What a load of rubbish! They, they just don't think. Where's it actually the goods? How are the goods going to get into the supermarkets? How's the actual source subject? How's the petrol going to get into the petrol stations, uh, etc.? The protesters blocking uh, blocking the roads. Come on. Now, now, what will happen if, as I say, I've got a 44 ton wagon here. If one of them uh, uh, jumps out in front of me, I'm uh, not going to stop for them. Obviously, I would. I would stop, but obviously, if I if I have to break for them... Dangerous. Say, I'm, yeah, two right is dangerous. And what what will happen if, God forbid, one of them dies? It'll be all uproar. Let's feel sorry for them. They're an absolute disgrace. And uh, what they're doing is, is wrong. Absolutely wrong. Got another Michael to talk to you. Michael and Michael, meet Michael. Michael in London. He says they're an absolute disgrace. Michael in London. I, 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 find it, I find it amazing, to be honest, the views that some of the people are expressing today. Um, what we're talking about here is the end of life on Earth. Any inconvenience that people feel, any inconvenience that's created by the, the disruption to sport, is I, I genuinely get that it must be frustrating. I genuinely get that it must be irritating to people that this kind of stuff is going on. But let's be honest, what's the protest about? That's, that's the nub of the thing here. People are protesting because the government and, and governments around the world are basically ignoring all of the climate science They're proceeding as if it's business as usual. Crisis, what crisis? The current government is planning on opening oil fields, new oil fields in the North Sea. 
we're talking about the end of life on Earth. Michael, near, Michael in Preston. Ma- uh, sorry, our sorry, children's Nick, children just... will curse us. Our children's okay, children Michael, will sorry, can curse I just ask, us. What, what's your answer? My answer is we have to transform society. There, there's no yeah, easy okay. option here. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be painful. It's going to be really awkward. And it's going to result in people having to massively change their lives. I would prefer we didn't have to do it. Don't get me wrong. But I would prefer yeah. we don't have to do it. But people talk about their lives being disrupted and how they find it difficult to go, sh- go shopping and do stuff. I have a child. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the rugby premiership final pales into insignificance. Okay, and my, exactly. Michael, Michael near Preston. You did say, Michael, this is ruining the country. The, the argument yes. of Tother well, Michael and others would say it's ruining a lot more than that. What's happening to us at the moment, Michael? Well, near well Preston. as I say, what's the what? What is the answer to heat? What what they're doing? They're uh, disru- well, apart from uh, disrupting obviously sports and events, which really they don't uh, sports. Uh, it doesn't matter. Don't get me wrong. I'm a great sports fan, but mm-hmm. but when they start uh, graffitiing uh, landmarks and heritage of of the country, that's an absolute disgrace. And they get they're getting locked up. A slap on the wrist, and a few hours later, they're, mm-hmm. yeah, they're out again. Somebody said one of previous callers said that they need to be locked up. They do. It's an absolute. Can I just, can I just come in here? Can I just come in here? Yeah. I mean, no, I'm, sorry, sorry, sorry to say. Let, let, let the other I'm, Michael in here. I, I, I'm dub- I'm juggling my Michaels. Go on, Michael in London. Okay, so is this me or the lorry driver? It's Michael in London. That's you. That's yeah. fine. Great. Okay, so look, what I was going to say, I, I understand. I understand the anger that some people feel about this, and I understand the fact that people are looking at this and they're going, this is messing up my life, this is getting in my way, this is awkward, this is frustrating. These people are not criminals. They're blinking heroes, to be honest. They shine a, they shine a mirror... On, on the actions of politicians who are sitting on their hands as if there's nothing for us to worry about. And, and, and we are going to, this is going to result, we're possibly past the point where, where we could avert major eco- ecological damage to the planet, the only planet that we know of that sustains life in the entirety can I, can I of one thing that we've ever found. Me. And we might be past the point where, we've, we're, where we're able to avert that. But we are talking about the end of life on Earth. And if, Michael. if we get the planet to a point where no one can live on it because the ecological conditions are so awful, where Michael, will Preston. we go? Got you, got yeah, you. Sorry, Nicky, I, I was just going to say, all this... One thing I don't know if anyone else has mentioned it today. All these time on the hands that that they've got, they, none of them actually work. <laughs> I know that's just just a case. So every time you see them, they're, they're doing this. They chain themselves to things. Come on, let's let's get a life. I work get a job, and I go to protests. I work, yeah. and I well, go to protests. I, well, I take well, my child to thing. school. Don't, don't stop I do the shopping. My wagon, I do the shopping. I go to work. Oh, I take sorry, my child shopping. to school. I participate in society. You're shopping there. Now, there's a great thing about getting the wagons off the road. How would you get your shopping from the supermarket if there was no wagons on the road? I'm not How? saying there shouldn't be any wagons on the road. What I'm saying is I'm not... we shouldn't be using fossil fuel to power those wagons. Those wagons have to be... We have to look at alternative technologies. We ha- okay, okay, we need we've, a we've methodology tried, for moving goods around the country. Electric wagons in work. We've, we've tried them. They don't work. They're not. Well, we need to work on the science then, because what we can't do is just carry on using fossil fuels. So it's science now we need to work on as well. No, no, I'm sorry, Michael. I I don't don't want to sound rude, but you're talking absolute rubbish. No, I'm not. This is the end of life on Earth. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you find it interesting. Thank you very much to all our callers. Have a wonderful weekend. Voice of the UK. This is BBC Radio 5 Live.